Hi! Welcome to Slightly Mad Science. Today we're going to be talking about violet wands. Now you might be asking, what the heck is that? Well, I'm going to tell you, tell you a little bit about how it works, and because it involves high voltage, then I'm going to proceed to do something dangerously stupid and zap myself in the face. Okay, so if that prospect entertains you, as I'm sure it does, stay tuned. Anyway, this is the violet ray. This is actually a device that was made between 1910 and 1950. Um, I think this one is dated to about 1920, 1930-ish. There's no dates on it, so I'm guesstimating based on what I found on the internet for this device. Now, this essentially is a small handheld Tesla coil. Now, some of you in physics class may see something that looks a little bit like this, with a little metal pointy electrode at the end that's a little bit longer. Um, today these devices are used for detecting electrical leaks, for demonstrating the principles of high voltage in physics classes, and strangely enough some people are using it for BDSM kinky sex stuff. But that's neither here nor there. So, this device comes in a couple parts. You have this part which is a spark gap generator. Essentially it's a large buzzer that opens and closes the circuit really, really fast, which creates a high frequency. Normally electricity is at 60 hertz in the United States, and this increases it significantly, which is necessary for a Tesla coil. This essentially is a Tesla coil. There is a primary and secondary coil in here, which is almost identical to what you'd find in a Tesla coil, just, well, this is kind of small. And it tends to put, the range of these tend to be between 10,000 and 50,000 volts. However, you don't usually just stick your finger in this thing when it's turned on. You usually have some kind of electrode. And the electrode actually insulates you from the electricity. So what people did with these, believe it or not, is they believed it would actually cure disease. As a matter of fact, if you look at some of the references I have in the description, you'll find that people thought this thing would cure just about anything. And as a matter of fact, that's probably why the person who bought this bought it. So, let me just give you an idea of how it works. In this light, it's not going to show up all that well. I'll do something in the dark later. You should see a purple light and, well, the loud buzzing noise. And it ranges anywhere from the low end where you can barely see it's on, but you can actually hear a little bit of uh, static electricity. And I can barely feel this at the moment. All the way up to here, which is a little noticeable. Now, the idea behind this thing is when you're using it on yourself for uh, medicinal purposes, you would actually be touching it directly to your skin, which actually you don't really feel a thing, just a, maybe a slight warmth at that. So what happens is you have all these electrons, some of them getting into the tube, because glass is an insulator, exciting the argon gas, making it purple, hence the violet wand, and then a little bit passing through the rest of the glass into your body. You only feel a little bit of a spark if it's close to your, if it's actually making a gap between you and your, between the electrode and your skin. But even still, it ends up being very minor. This electrode is meant for your throat, your arm, anywhere where there's a curvature. This one was meant for your hair. And this one was meant for just general purpose or, you know, if you want to stick it on your eyeball or whatever. And yes, they even had ones made of glass that would go down your throat, up your rear, and generally other places that aren't really all that PG-13. Yay. So, now you've seen what this device does. I've given you a little description of it. I've also included some links where you can go do some more research. Now's the fun part. I'm going to zap myself in the face. Starting off with the electrodes and then moving up. And I'm also going to electrify a light bulb since, well, this is the safe way of doing it as opposed to the way I did it before. Okay, now I'm going to show you this in the dark. It actually shows up a uh, whole lot better. You might be able to see the sparks a little better now. And then... Ooh, ozone, yummy. Okay, so that was with that. A little 
brake thingy. Tingles. And, well, because this just isn't dangerously stupid enough, I kind of made my own electrode, which uses a light bulb. Ooh, pretty. Now, if you notice, this actually zaps a little bit better because the glass here is a whole lot thinner and it makes really cool tendrils if you touch it. This you feel, but still... Eh, not that bad. So what you're going to do next is take the metal electrode out. And by the way, this is the dangerously stupid part to, for real. Because this is about 10 to 50,000 volts. It's not a whole lot of amperage. It's actually infinitesimal amperage. It still stings. Now you're not going to see anything yet because there's no glass. So this is the full voltage. Going right to me. I think that warrants a close-up. I have a feeling dinner this evening won't taste quite the same. And no, I will zap myself in the eye. I have to draw the line somewhere. And a nice good close-up of the bulb again. Pretty light. <laughs> Sorry. Can't help it. This is fun. Ooh.